What's up, guys? I'm Scar from the Score Esports here with Hotshot GG, George, from the owner of CLG. He's been around the scene for a long time. Some people even say, say he's the grandfather of League of Legends, or at least I do personally. George, how's it feel today? I mean, right now it's not feeling too good. Uh, let me preface this with that. Unfortunately, CLG just lost 0-3 to TSM. I understand there are some technical difficulties, game one, and uh, unfortunately, one of the most specific picks about your mid laner got just banned out permanently from the series. Uh, as an owner, how do you feel about that? I mean, I'm not happy about it, but there's not much we can do. So you just have to kind of roll with the punches. And, uh, you know, even though Aurelian Soul got banned, uh, and we took a disadvantage there. We lost just fair and square. Uh, so I've talked to a lot of people, and recently there's been this patch that came out that really affected competitive play with the unable to, like, uh, essentially broke down lane swaps to where you can only lane swap after a certain amount of time or even not at all. Uh, how do you feel about these big changes happening before important events such as playoffs or worlds? Yeah, I mean, it's really frustrating. It puts a lot of the work and effort people have been doing all split and uh, I wouldn't say like diminishes them entirely but it, it does put a dent into them. Uh, what do you have about critics of, the, of comments like that who say that players and teams should just learn to adapt and be better you know because I hear that a lot especially last worlds when the Mordekaiser patch came out with juggernauts and gameplay everyone was like oh you should just adapt to the situation do you feel like that's maybe like an easy out for them to say or do you feel like there's some like maybe something actually that they're right about with that statement. Yeah, I mean, personally, I think the adaptation makes it more of like a coin toss than an actual like this team is clearly better because some some people are just aligned with certain champions and have spent more time in the past developing certain champions. So, uh, yeah, it's just an advantage to the teams that fall into the meta that day. Well, unfortunately, your 3 P run kind of fell flat today, so you can't win your third straight title. However, CLG uh, has two titles of its own. It's one of the best orgs in North America, at least in the League of Legends side. How has your recent su success been for your organization and for your yourself, personally? Uh, <laughs> you're bringing it back to something positive after a, a severe loss, in my opinion. Um, I mean, it's been... It's been really great, and like we gave CLG fans something to look forward to, and you know we finally suffered a loss. It's been it's been pretty pretty a lot. It's it's been a long time since we we've actually lost, and uh, you know it happens. I understand there's a lot of ups and downs, both in team level and personal level for players. Um, do you consider just to be like maybe a little bit of a, a downward spiral right before Worlds? Do you expect to do, still put on a great performance for that? So I think a lot of the issues that happened with our team near the end of the split uh, was actually Tony suffered vertigo and it set him back uh, a, a severe amount and it's it was pretty disheartening to see him like unable to move from the bed and he was just super ill and uh, I think that kind of actually s screwed with our team chemistry a lot so you know we really have to reform and rethink about how we how we treat uh, practice and focus and everything uh, we really just need to rethink how we're how we're working together so I've heard a lot about Tony. I've worked with Tony personally, and just in general, support staff around for all the LCS teams are getting better and more fleshed out. How vital do you think good support staff is, and to some extent, Tony is to your organization? Yeah, um, Tony is incredibly important to our organization. I don't think we would have won any of our championships without him. But, uh, you know, I think all around, across the coaching staff and the player side, I think we all just, and even the management side, I don't think we did well this split. I have a question. So I recently talked to Reginald, the owner of TSM, and he said that uh, right now it's really tough for owners to actually get money and create revenue in the scene. You're, one of, you're part of one of the most successful organizations. I would at least say top four successful organizations in League of Legends. Would you say that statement's still true for you? Oh, uh, completely. It's extremely hard 
And a lot of the revenue could be spent on things like, you know, better um, media opportunities for the players, like more, um, more highlights and more focus. Right now, it's uh, incredibly difficult to monetize uh, League of Legends. And uh, I think it's really starting to hurt the engagement and the fan focus uh, on the game. Uh, would you say that's a big reason why like, people are putting, pushing for franchising so much and why investors maybe are a little bit scared to enter the scene or approach the scene? Yeah, I mean, that's completely true. It's The wheel quickly churns players out because of relegation. You know, you're always in fear of um, losing your spot and it doesn't allow for people to make those big comebacks. You know, it takes time for people to really build themselves up and refine their confidence, refine their stride. And relegation just forces them out in six months. You know, if, if you see another player that's doing better right now because the meta is a certain way uh, and maybe this player is just peaking at that exact time, you know, you just pick up that player because you're afraid of always getting knocked out. So I just think relegation is... It, it was good at the start, and I think it served its purpose, but as time goes on, it's really starting to hurt the ecosystem. Well, talk to me a little bit about player longevity, because like you said, you know, maybe one player is better at a certain point than another player. What, do you, what would you say is the average lifespan of a player right now? I mean, right now, uh, it's, it's a year to two years, and that's incredibly disheartening. There's some players that make it longer, but if I think back to all the times we've really had to make changes on the team, it's mainly because of being close to relegations. Uh, it just makes us do dramatic changes immediately. And if I look at other teams and other owners that have been in similar situations, that's what they face. Do you feel like there needs to be that kind of pressure, though, for the scene to grow? Or, or do you think that like it's fine? Because from what I understand, if a team falls into challenger scene they lose all their revenue like all of their sponsorships is that, is that true from your perspective yeah your business essentially ends when you hit uh challenger series and i think that's incredibly destructive and uh you know i don't think it's going to be uh an option for riot to keep that system the way it is uh so if, you, if there was, let's say, a way for you to retain uh, your sponsorships or for a challenger scene to be more fleshed out, would you then be not opposed to keeping the relegation system? I, don't, I, I think that's too far off, like maybe in an ideal world. But we're living in the world we are right now and we have the limited resources we have right now. Um, so definitely, I think that is not an option. Well, let me round this out with saying that you guys are go still going to Toronto to play in the third place match uh, against Immortals. How do you feel about that match going in after today? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be an interesting match. It's, it's I mean, for, for me, it really feels like, it, it feels like the loser's match. I mean, we have to play it, and it's, uh, it's something that, you know, we were going to really try hard to win, but, you know, you don't want to go to another country to play a third place match. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's something I'd expect for a finals. So it's a little bit disheartening, especially since, uh, you know, I'm Canadian myself and I wanted to uh, rep those CLG Canada jerseys proud and uh, be back home and be able to win in Canada. That would have been like a dream come true for me, but didn't happen, but such is life. Do you have anything, any last words to say to any fans out there, maybe even some Canadian fans who are still excited to see you guys go in Toronto? Yeah, uh, look, for, look out for us guys. And uh, you know, I appreciate all the support you've given us for quite a long time now. And we're gonna work really, really hard to make sure that we can perform for Worlds. Well, I'm here with Hotshot GG. I'm Scar here from the Score Esports. You can find more content online in our mobile app. Thank you guys. Hope you guys have a nice day.